So we're here with our second week of the Striper Season Update, brought to you by West Marine. This week, we're going to talk to Kevin Blinkoff about the Striper Cup. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening with uh, the 2021 Striper Season so far, where the migration is. Uh, Jersey continues to be the hot spot for Striper fishing right now, especially the northern half and the Raritan Bay. Those are pre-spawn fish getting ready to head up the Hudson. But first, they're feeding on Menhaden. Uh, some herring, I guess, are in there probably heading up the Hudson as well. But that isn't the only place in Jersey where the fishing's good. Pretty much all the backwaters, you know, the inlets, the bays from Shark River on south, have a decent amount of schoolie sized stripers. And it won't be too long before some larger fish start making their way up after spawning in the Chesapeake. But, Kevin, I think we're re about reaching peak spawning time in the Chesapeake. Is that right? Yeah, it seems like right now with water temperatures being where they are, um, we're seeing some big bass moving into Chesapeake tributaries, um, starting to spawn of spawning fish moving into the Delaware River as well. And like you said, they're massing up outside the Hudson. We'll probably be heading up there soon. Yeah, that spawn tends to be, you know, a couple weeks later, usually end of April into early May, that they see the, the most of the uh, spawning activity, depending on the water temperatures, I guess. But uh, throughout New England, still mostly a holdover bite. Haven't heard of any migratory fish yet. Have you? No, I've seen some pictures this week. I mean, it's starting to, people are starting to question. They're sending in some pictures of fish they're catching in Buzzards Bay on Cape Cod, um, some fish in Rhode Island. We're almost at that point where it becomes questionable. Is it a holdover? Is it a fresh fish? But most of the fish I've seen so far, it seems like they're most likely holdovers. Um, I even saw a real big fish caught on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, looked like a 40 inch or so fish. They get some big fish that hold over in the ponds there. But, um, you know, also the Boston area, some holdover striped bass. Those fish getting active tells you that the water temperatures are warming up, and I'm guessing it won't be very long. You've got schoolie striped bass on the north shore of Long Island. Probably see those fish showing up in Rhode Island, um, you know, the sort of famous first spot for schoolies in Rhode Island, uh, at the West Wall there. Probably within seven to ten days, April 15th, maybe third week of April, sometime around then. Yeah, and it's usually a day or two after that you hear about them on the south shore of Martha's Vineyard. That's the first place in, in Massachusetts you tend to see those migratory fish. And then from there, it's not too long before they spread throughout uh, Buzzards Bay, the south side of the Cape, and then eventually up through uh, you know the rest of Massachusetts toward Boston. But still a few weeks away from that. And so a few weeks away from the start of the Striper Cup, <laughs> that was a, that was a heck of a transition right there. Um, that was very nice. Yeah, the Striper Striper Cup starts May first this year. We're really excited for it. Um, last year we had our biggest in terms of participation and in terms of prizes that we gave away, and we're kind of hoping that this year is is just as big, if not bigger. So. How do you win a prize in the Striper Cup? I guess we'll get right to the to the meat of it there. So, so a lot of people ask that question because they think of the Striper Cup in terms of traditional tournaments. And so they think, okay, I have to catch the biggest striped bass. I've got to, you know, if I can't catch a huge fish, I can't win a prize. And that's not what the Striper Cup is. Uh, the Striper Cup is really hard to define, but it's different from your traditional tournament. And most base, the most basic way I can describe it, the way it works, uh, you sign up and join. We send out a sign-up package from our sponsors full of goodies. You get a free lure. You get a Columbia shirt. Um, you get a pin. You get stickers. You get all kinds of fun stuff. That gets sent directly to you, and that's just part of joining up. Then once the tournament starts on May 1st, any size striped bass that you catch, take a photograph of, and release, you can enter in for prizes. Um, so you don't have to put the fish on a tape measure. Um, we decided past couple of years that we want to see these fish get back in the water as healthy as possible. So really just a picture holding the fish or a picture of the fish as you let it go even better and then enter it on our website. You can enter up to three fish per week. You tell us how many inches long it was. And for every inch of striped bass that you enter that week, you get a chance at a prize. So if you catch three 30 inch striped bass that week, you get 90 chances in the drawing and we give away multiple prizes every week. Typically we give away a prize for a shore fisherman, a prize for a boat fisherman, a prize for a youth fisherman, and a prize for a kayak fisherman. We switch it up every week because our sponsors are great. They'll add in prizes. We'll get bonus prizes. But typically what it makes it out to be is any given week, you have a whole new chance to win. So it's almost like every week's a new tournament. Anytime you go fishing, any week you go out and you catch a single striped bass, you got a chance to win a prize. And our prizes are everything from Yeti buckets and coolers and products to um, we've got pen rods and reels. Um, we have West Marine gift cards. We've got Costa sunglasses. 
just all great ways to win prizes. The other way you can win prizes in the Striper Cup is through our weekly photo contest in that basically with all of the photo submissions we get every week, we pick one that is our favorite. So just kind of send them around in the office. We all take a look. And if there's a photo in there that we think, hey, that's a great, you know, great looking photo, good fish. We pick that the winner of the week and that wins a pair of Costa sunglasses. So I know I'm part of that whole judging process when we send the photos around to decide on that photo contest winner. And some of the things we look for are a fish that's being well supported, held horizontally, you know, a fish that we want to make sure that we're choosing a photo of a fish that had a good chance of swimming away strong. We want to encourage those good catch and release and fish handling uh, tactics. You know, beyond that, other photography things like being it well lit, you know, in a, in a scenic background, um, things like that. Those are, are, are among the things we look for. Happy anglers, too. Yeah, definitely. And we, um, we're trying to use the tournament as much as possible to promote the idea of good catch and release tactics. Really important with striped bass right now, um, being overfished. They're rebuilding striped bass right now. One of the best ways we can help them rebuild is by making sure that we practice proper catch and release. So we use the tournament as a platform for that. We share a lot of tips and techniques for how to make sure that you release them properly. Um, you have to use circle hooks this year when you're fishing with bait. We strongly recommend, if possible, to use single hook lures, pinch down barbs. Um, like you said, support the fish. Don't keep them out of the water too long. Take a quick picture, get them back in. Make sure you let them recuperate if they need to, especially some of those bigger fish, and watch them swim away. And, you know, that's just one way this tournament, besides just being catch and release, also helping get the word out and really being conservation minded. So beyond those weekly prizes, there are some larger prizes we award at the end of the tournament, the biggest being the boat, the North Coast boat. And you don't even have to enter a fish to have a chance of winning that boat. Is that correct? That's right. So just by entering the Striper Cup as an adult over the age of 18, you will get a golden ticket that enters you to win the North Coast boat. And all you have to do, even if you don't enter a fish the whole tournament, you take your golden ticket. We mail it out to you in September. You bring it to the Striper Fest party, which is every year in Falmouth. Well, almost every year. We didn't get to have it last year because of COVID. But every year in Falmouth, you bring that golden ticket, turn it in. And at the very end of the festival, we draw one winner who wins the boat. And I know we've gotten this question a lot. We are planning. We are hopeful. Our fingers are crossed. We're planning to have a Striper Fest this September. At the moment, um, you know, at the moment, the town has not promised anything because of COVID. But looking ahead, Looking at the way things are going, we are really hopeful that we'll be able to pull it off this year and we'll give away that North Coast boat in person. We definitely missed doing it last year. Yeah, yeah, we did. We had a great event still. We did a, live, a lot of live events through social media and, you know, we had a great attendance kind of in spirit to uh, the virtual Striper Fest last year. But everybody here is eager to uh, to get back there and do it in person this year. And we've been hearing from a lot of our participants, too, that they they missed the event. Everybody missed going to events uh, over the past year. So, you know, fingers crossed. Well, Kevin, in addition to the boat, what are some of the other larger prizes that we give away at the end of the tournament? What's you know beyond the weekly prizes? So beyond the weekly prizes, we also do some drawings of some bigger prizes like uh, Native Kayak, for example, is a sponsor in the kayak uh, side of the tournament. They give away some prizes throughout the tournament, but also at the very end, we give away a couple of those Native Kayak boats. Um, we have some larger prize packages because we want to just give away some more opportunities for people to win, um, more opportunities for people who come to the festival. So we do some some door prizes, some drawings, some things like that. Um, I'll, to be honest, our sponsors are great, and they tend to give us a bunch of prizes in the beginning to give away. And then as new products come out, for example, I know Penn is releasing some new reels this year. They're going to let us know about those when they come out and supply it. Um, so just by being part of the Striper Cup, for example, you could be the first person to find out about a new reel coming out from Penn and maybe you could be the winner of one of them as well. So really you just stay tuned throughout the 20 weeks of the tournament and you'll find out more and more about other prizes we're giving away. There's nothing else like it that gives away so many prizes. I mean, we're talking at least 40 rods and reels from Penn, um, at least uh, 20 different you know Yeti products, coolers, things like that. Um, we're giving away at least two native kayaks. So that's just the beginning of it. Um, we've got Simrad, Lawrence is also a sponsor. So we'll be giving away, and those are some of the big prizes we'll be giving away at the end of the tournament, some of these big Simrad units. Um, so really there are some great prizes, some great gifts uh, that you can win just participating in the Striper Cup. And you stay tuned. Every week we will announce what prizes you can win in the upcoming week and announce who won the prizes in that current week. And like I said, every week's a new chance to win. Any size striped bass can win in any given week. So don't feel like you have to be the most hardcore fisherman and fish every week. 
Don't feel like you have to catch the biggest striped bass. It's more about just participating it, see what you can do. And some of it eventually comes out to the luck of the draw. You could be lucky enough to win a weekly prize. You could be lucky enough to win the big drawing at the end for a North Coast boat with a Yamaha engine and Simrad Electronics. So, you know, you got to be in it to win it. But other than that, like it's it's just comes down to luck at the very end there. Sounds good. Just like fishing. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know this is the 15th year of the Striper Cup. This started all the way back in 2006. Part of the reason I know that is because I had my cheat sheet from the first year that we did it, which was actually our 10th year anniversary issue for the May issue of uh, May 2006. We're coming up on what's our 25th anniversary issue of the magazine coming out this May. And when the Striper Cup started, it was quite a bit different than it is today, Kevin. How, how, what did it look like when it first started? Yeah, first I got to correct you there. We, this is actually our 16th Striper Cup. So we were hoping to celebrate the big 15th last year at Striper Fest. It's all right. Um, but this is actually going to be our 16th Striper Cup uh, because our first one was in 2006. Um, and yeah, and it's it has, like you said, it has changed a lot. Um, when we first launched the Striper Cup, Striper Fishing was was different, the way people approached it, even though it was only 16 years ago. And so we launched it building off of what used to be a classic striper tournament. And this was the RJ Schaefer saltwater fishing competition. That was the name of it named after RJ Schaefer beer, who was the sponsor. And that worked off a point system where basically I think it was striped bass over 15 pounds. Every single one of those that you caught and weighed in um, could earn you points. So it was really about catching and keeping as many striped bass over 15 pounds as you could um, so certainly not a conservation minded tournament, but that was just a different time. We're talking late 40s, 50s, 60s. Kevin, just to interrupt you for one second, the, I actually just read about the R.J. Schaefer uh, fishing contest, which was in that same issue. I just showed the May, 19, uh, May 2006 issue of On the Water magazine, and they did award one point per pound for every fish caught from a boat and two points per pound for every, fi- every striped bass caught from the surf. Now, that tournament also involved codfish, weak fish some years and bluefish. And, um, you know, it started as a way to promote the Schaefer Beer Company, which uh, I don't know if you know this. Their slogan was, it is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. I figured that'd be right up your alley. (laughs) All right. um, I'll take that. That is a great slogan. Um, So getting back to fishing. (laughs) All right. Now I'm all flustered and thirsty. (laughs) So the, so the RJ, RJ Schaefer Fishing Contest, not really a conservation-minded tournament. It was just a different mindset back then. It started in the late 40s, went into the 60s and 70s. And what it was really about there was there was a strong um, competition side of it. And it was about these clubs as well. You had a lot of saltwater fishing clubs at the time. And it was sort of about measuring up against each other and, and competing and being able to say, look at you know how many pounds of fish our club is catching versus your club. So it was really about these different clubs kind of measuring up and trying to say, here's how many fish we caught versus how many fish you caught. Um, Yeah. And they had actually up to 500 clubs participating in that tournament, uh, you know, at the heyday of the tournament, there were a lot more fishing clubs back then. And over the years, kind of interest in, in fishing uh, clubs has, has waned a bit. And now there aren't nearly that many, but at one point the uh, RJ Schaefer tournament had 33 Long Island fishing clubs alone. Right. Within the States, there were a lot of rivalries. And then from North Carolina to Maine, you know, who, which state had the best fishing, which club had the best uh, fishermen. So Right. And that was part of, you know, uh, if you know the history of striped bass, the tournament came to an end right about the time that striped bass populations were crashing and, and hit all time lows into the 80s. Um, striped bass became, you know, a lot of trouble. There was uh, some moratoriums set up in order to bring them back. So in 2006, striped bass in a very different place and on the water said, let's try and bring back that spirit of this tournament. And part of that was, let's try to re-engage fishing clubs, which a lot of them had disappeared. Let's try and see if we can get new clubs created. And, you know, I can say there were some clubs that were created to compete in the Striper Cup early on, which was great. And we looked at it as, okay, what's the new conservation ethic with striped bass? Instead of as many fish as you can weigh in, let's limit it to 10 fish per club. At the time, I mean, this is only now 16, 15, 16 years ago, that was that was conservation minded to say, OK, every team or club in the tournament can only weigh in 10 fish. You're still killing or weighing in 10 big striped bass. Um, so that's where we started. It had that conservation bend, but it was really about, again, 
you know, who are the best fishermen, who's catching the biggest fish and weighing them in a tackle shop for prizes, sort of that what now looks to be like an old school tournament. Over the years, pretty quickly, actually, we started to tweak the rules of the tournament. We started to cut down in order to keep so many big fish from being kept, um, cut down the number of fish per team, cut down the number of fish per person. And then um, not too long after the tournament started, I think it was in about 2012, we introduced catch and release prizes. They've been really well received. And that has now transitioned us to, I believe it was four or five years ago at this point, doing a complete catch and release tournament. We had some concerns at the time um, because so many people do enjoy or did enjoy keeping trophy size striped bass, weighing them in. We were a little worried going to a complete catch and release tournament, how that would be received and um, was really happy to see it received very well by the striper fishing community. You've, there's just an incredible conservation ethos now in the striper cup community, in the striper community and in the striper cup community um, that our numbers have grown now that we're completely catch and release. We've been really well supported by our sponsors, Costa, um, Yamaha, especially the, them really supporting this catch and release tournament and wanting to help. And now that we see striped bass um, numbers not being where we want them to be, it's great that we have a tournament that we are now completely catch and release. And not only that, but we can also promote it and promote the idea of catching and releasing striped bass, of bringing striped bass. We can talk to our sponsors and tell them, let them know, hey, look how important striped bass are. Look at the thousands of people fishing this tournament spending money, going to Striper Fest, buying your products. None of this is possible if we don't have a healthy striped bass um, population. So now we have national sponsors. We have people, the fisheries managers, um, people, politicians, people like that, looking at this and saying, okay, here is a business. Here's a lot of business, a lot of, of spending that goes on of people who go to catch striped bass. We need to do what we can to make sure that this fishery comes back and, and is, is supporting this striped bass fishing economy. Um, it's, it's that important of a fish. So I'm proud of where Striper Cup stands now that, like I said, it's conservation minded, it's catch and release, and it really is promoting the idea to the people who make a difference, getting the idea out to them that we need to take care of this fishery. Yeah. And you look at, at Striper Fest at that field at the end, when we're about to give away the boat and you see how many people are out there, how many dedicated striped bass fishermen are there in one place. And that gives, you know, that is such a great representation of just how many people this fish is important to. And that's a great thing to say, hey, we need to keep, we need to conserve these fish. We need to keep this population strong and, and help it rebound. Yeah. And so hopefully, I mean, I know that people are taking notice. Um, I know fishery managers have taken notice of it. And I know that uh, state fishery managers, um, people at the Atlantic State Marine Fisheries Commission, who are ultimately making decisions about this fish, they're aware of the Striper Cup. They're aware of the thousands of anglers who are passionate that fish this tournament. And they see that catch and release does work, that this is a catch and release fishery, um, very large part of catch and release fishery that is still incredibly popular and supporting a lot of local tackle shops, businesses, um, national tackle companies as well. Um, it's just, it's a beloved fish. That's where we started with the Striper Cup. We always said that this was a celebration of the beloved striped bass. There's really no better word to describe this fish. It somehow goes beyond really any fish species in the Northeast in terms of how fishermen feel about it. Um, it's a special fish. It is beloved. It's everybody's fish. And we just hope that with the Striper Cup, we celebrate that um, and kind of give it that platform that it deserves. Yeah. I mean, no other fish that we have here in the Northeast. I can't think of another fish in, you know, in the Atlantic that you can catch in so many different places in so many different ways. I mean, I used to catch them when I lived in Philadelphia. I would catch them in the Delaware River the same time guys at the Jersey Shore are catching them. Same time that people out on Block Island are catching them. I mean, there's stripers, the way their migration works, it brings them past so many different fishermen fishing in so many different ways. And there's no other fish like that. Like you said, it is, is it's everybody's fish. You know, so Yeah, they really are. They're, they're special. Um, we got to do everything we can to protect them right now. And I'm just thinking about the fact that we're going to have those migrating schoolie stripers back here in two to three weeks. Uh, every year, it's like, I can't wait. So I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it to get started. I'm excited for that tournament to get started on May 1st because we start to see pictures come in. You see happy anglers holding striped bass. Um, it's a great time of the year. Yeah, I can't wait. So just uh, just a couple, couple more weeks for us. Uh, I'm hoping to actually head south and maybe get a jump start on my striper season in a couple weeks.
Thanks for watching this second installment of the Striper Season Update brought to you by West Marine. We're going to be posting one of these every Friday on our YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe. Also, make sure you sign up for the Striper Cup at StriperCup.com. And also every Friday, we post a new Striper Migration map at OnTheWater.com, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you next week.